Hey everyone and welcome to another um, list of possibilities to read for Horror Mayhem. This one specifically focuses on the theme for week three of Horror Mayhem, which is Cosmic Horror. Now, I must admit, I have never heard of Cosmic Horror until Becky and Scott were talking about Cosmic Horror for the announcement video of Horror Mayhem. So I'm still, so I've tried to do a little bit of research into what Cosmic Horror is. I am still not 100% sure I understand <laughs> what it is. Now, with what I have researched, it seems like it's, it refers, the stuff that I've researched has referred a lot to H.P. Lovecraft and how it's like you as a character or something like that is very small compared to the large grand scheme of things. So like the big old universe is huge and you are just a small little speck um, of things. Something like that and it's very, the other term I've come across a lot with trying to research this is strange. Um, so strange. <laughs> Horror. Now, I did read um, the Annihil An Authority. Annihil I can't even remember the name of the series, but it was Je by Jeff Vandermeer, and that is considered Lovecraftian. So, if you want, and that is strange, it is classified as science fiction, but it also is horror, which I wasn't aware of, and I thoroughly enjoyed it, and it was very weird. <laughs> so, that's kind of what I'm going with my guide. Um, my guide. I don't have a guide, but with letting guide me with what to read for this week. So I am by no means an expert in this at all. So these are just some suggestions to maybe start getting you to look in different places. If you know what you want to read that qualifies as cosmic horror, by all means, go ahead. Um, with doing some research, I looked at several websites. Do I remember what the websites are now? No. I just searched and like went to Google and searched comic horror books. And there's several websites that came up. Like Goodreads is obviously one of them. And it came up with some of the ones on this list. There were others of people that compiled books that qualified as cosmic horror. Um, and so I also combined their lists. And there were a couple of different of those with the ones on Goodreads. And so now I have... Um, my list of what I'll read. So I like what I did with week two, which is where I just started from the bottom of my list and just worked my way to the top, which again, at the top of the list, um, as with the previous TBR possibility video, is what I will be reading for this week. So let me get Goodreads pulled up here and I'll get the first book pulled up and we'll just kind of go ahead and get on into it. Okay, so the first, now I'm, I don't know if I'm going to put the image of the book here or over here. I'll kind of scoot over this way a little bit so I can put the image here. Okay, so the first book is actually, it looks like it's part of a series. And the series is That Which Should Not Be. Right now there's only two primary works, so I don't know if it's just a duology. The last book was published in 2015. Um, and this one I'm talking about was published in 2011. Um, and the title of the first book in this particular series is also That Which Should Not Be. Uh, this was written by Brett J. Talley. So all of these, <laughs> I all I did when I compiled my list is I basically was like, okay, that cover looks pretty cool, that title sounds cool. Um, I've heard of this author, so we'll go ahead and stick this author on there, which I think there's only two. There's two. Um, but I have not read any of these, so I can't, like usual, recommend any of them. But these are definitely ones that I now, with looking into things a little bit more... Oh no, I take it back. There is one I have read. And I was surprised that that qualified. But with doing my research, I'm not so surprised anymore. So we'll get into that when I get to that one. I forgot I had that one written down. Okay, so back to That Which Should Not Be by Brett J. Talley. Um, I'm just going to have to read the synopsis on all of these. So, let's see. Miss Catonic University has a long whispered reputation of being strongly connected to all things occult and supernatural. From the faculty to the students, the fascination with otherworldly legends and objects runs rampant. 
So, when Carter Weston's professor, Dr. Thayerson, asks him to search a nearby village for a book that is believed to control the inhuman forces that rule the earth, in Incendium Maleficarium, the Inferno of the Witch, the student doesn't hesitate to begin the quest. Weston's journey takes an unexpected turn, however, when he ventures into a tavern in the small town of Anchorhead. Rather than passing the evening as a solitary patron, Weston joins four men who regale him with stories of their personal experiences with forces both uh, pre preternatural and damned. Two stories hit close to home as they tie the tally the tellers uh, directly to Weston's current mission. Oh, as they tie the tellers, not tellers, tellers. Okay. Two stories hit close to home as they tie the tellers directly to Weston's current mission. His unanticipated role as a passive listener uh, proves fortuitous and uh, miscatonic. Uh, let's see. Though, though, proves to be a grave mistake. Quickly, Weston realizes he has played a role in potentially opening the gate between the netherworld and the world of man. Reversing the course of events means forgetting all he thought he knew about Miskatonic and his professor and embracing an unknown beyond his wildest imagination. Now, before I read this, I'm going to have to look up what the heck Miskatonic means. If you know, definitely let me know in the comments below. But it's just a quick Google search to figure that out. So, that's definitely something that I am interested in. Okay. Okay, so this next book was written by an author that I mentioned, I believe, in the first TBR Possibility video for Her and Mayhem, which was about uh, supernatural creatures and beings. Um, this one is actually part of a series, and it's the Persons Non Grata series, and it looks like there's two primary works. Last one was in 2017, so I don't know if it's, again, if it's a duology or if there will be more. Um, I'll possibly find out if I if and whenever I get to this. So this this particular book, uh, or book one in the series, is called Hammers on Bone. And this was written by Cassandra Kaw. So Cassandra Kaw, was it Nothing but Black and Teeth, I think? I'm looking at my previous page. Yes, so uh, Cassandra Kaw, the first week I did Nothing but Black and Teeth. Um, but this one we're focusing on Hammers on Bone. So I'm wondering if um, I'd have to look, but I would suspect, and if I remember right, some of the lists actually had nothing but black and teeth on it, so it could work for either week uh, from my research, which is very minimal, and my knowledge, which is very, very limited. So, okay, Hammers on Bone. This one says, John Pearsons is a private investigator with a distasteful job from an unlikely client. He's been hired by a 10-year-old to kill the kid's stepdad, uh, Mackenzie. The man in question is abusive, abrasive, and abominable. Probably did not say that right, but yeah. He's also a monster, which makes Pearsons the perfect thing to hunt him. Over the course of his ancient, arcane existence, he's hunted gods and demons and broken them in his teeth. As Persons investigates the horrible McKinsey, he realizes that he carries something far uh, darker. He's infected with an alien presence, and he's spreading that monstrosity far and wide. Luckily, Pearsons is no stranger to the occult, being an ancient and magical intelligence himself. The question is whether the private, uh, the private dick can take down the abusive stepdad without realizing the holds on his own horrifying, horrifying potential. So, nothing but, or no, Hammers on Bone is that one. Okay, another possibility I came up with, which I really admit I do like the cover of this one, but it's Agents of Dreamland is the name of the book, and it's actually part of a series as well. So far, there's three primary works. Um, the last one released in 2020. The name of this series is uh, Tinfoil Dossier. Probably said that wrong. There's a lot of words I'm going to be saying wrong. Uh, this is by Caitlin R. Kiernan, I believe is how it's said. So the synopsis reads, A government special agent known only as uh, Signal Man, get, I think, uh, gets off a train on a stunningly hot morning in Winslow, Arizona. 
Later that day, he meets a woman in a diner to exchange information about an event that happened a week earlier, for which neither has an explanation, but which haunts this, the signal man. In a ranch house near the shore of the Salton Sea, a cult leader gathers up the weak and susceptible, the children of the next level, and offers them something to believe in and in a chance for transcendence. The future is coming and they will help to usher it in. A day after the events at the ranch house, uh, which disturbed the single man, si signal man, um, so de so holy cow. Let me start that sentence over. A day after the events at the ranch house, which disturbed the signal man so deeply that he and his government sought to help sought out help from uh, other sources. Uh, John Johns Hopkins Applied Physics Laboratory abruptly loses contact with NASA's interplanetary probe New Horizons. That was a mouthful. Okay. Something out beyond the orbit of Pluto has made contact, and a woman floating outside of time looks to the future and the past for answers to what can save humanity. Okay, so that is Agents of Dreamland. See, and these do, so far, I mean, I've only mentioned three, but so far they all sound bizarre. Yeah, that they are going to be weird reads. So if you like books that are weird, then this is probably definitely the right <laughs> route for, for you. Okay, so this next one is called Wintertide, and this is by Ruthanna Emrys. And this is another one that's part of a series. And it's the Innsmouth Legacy. And so far there are three primary works. Um, last one in 2018. So I don't know if it's just a trilogy or what, but... Okay, so book one again is called Wintertide. And it reads, After attacking Devil's Reef in 1928, the government rounded up the people of Innsmouth and took them to the desert, far from their ocean, their deep one ancestors, and... Uh, and their sleeping good... Chululu? <laughs> I don't know. It's C-T-H-U-L-H-U. -H -H don't know how to pronounce that. Uh, only um, only Af Afra and Caleb Marsh survived the camps, and they emerged without a past or a future. The government that stole Afra's life now needs her help. FBI um, agent Ron Spector believes that communist spies have stolen dangerous magical secrets from Mysticonic University. Um, so there's a second time I've heard that. Okay. Secrets that could turn the Cold War hot in an instant and hasten the end of the human race. Afra, maybe it's Afra, I don't know. Afra must return to the ruins of her home, gather scraps of her stolen history, and assemble a new family to face the darkness of human nature. So there you go, Winter Tide. And did I say who it was? It's by Ruthanna Amaris. Can't remember if I said the author's name, but there it is, just in case I didn't. Okay, now this one just looks really bizarre. Um, the series title is Laundry Files, and it looks like there's nine primary works in this series so far. Um, I don't know if that's all or if there'll be more, like with all of these that are in the series. So, okay. <clears throat> The first book in the Laundry Files is The Atrocity Archives, and this is by Charles Strauss, and the cover is just really bizarre. Okay, uh, let's see. Never volunteer for active duty. Bob Howard is a low-level techie working for a super-secret secret government agency. While his colleagues are out saving the world, Bob's under a desk res uh, restoring lost data. His world was dull and safe, but then he went and got noticed. Now, Bob is up to his neck in spycraft, parallel universes, dimension-hopping terrorists, monstrous elder gods, and the end of the world. Only one thing is certain. It will take more than a full system reboot, reboot to sort this mess out. Hi. Hi, baby. Okay, so that is the Atrocity Archives. Okay, so this one looks like it's a standalone, and that is The Ballad of Black Tom by Victor Lavelle. By Victor Lavelle. 
And this one says, people move to New York looking for magic and nothing will convince them it isn't there. Charles Thomas Tester hustles to put food on the table, keep the roof over his father's head from Harlem to Flushing Meadows to Red Hook. He knows what magic a suit can cast, the invisibility a guitar case can provide, and the curse written on his skin that attracts the eye of wealthy white folks and their cops. But when he delivers an occult tome to a reclusive sorceress in the heart of Queens, Tom opens a door to a deeper realm of magic and earns the attention of things best left sleeping. A storm that might swallow the world is building in Brooklyn. Will T Black Tom live to see it break? Okay, so the Bla Ballad of Black Tom, and that again was by Victor Lavelle. And I'll have these, some of these uh, authors are hard um, to s spell or I may be pronouncing them wrong. So I'll, like the other two videos, I'll have them linked in the, or not linked, but I'll have the name of the, the title of the book and the author's name listed in the description box. Um, so you can definitely go there to get the correct spelling of things if you need it. Okay, now this next one um, I did read and it's actually a manga. So I think manga is a good way to kind of step into horror as well. I did not realize this book classified as cosmic horror, uh, but it does. So I read this one, I gave it three stars. I There were scenes that were a bit disturbing and I can see how it would be horrific. Um, I definitely want to read more of this author's work. <clears throat> I did like it. But yeah, it was just, I mean, bizarre is the best way to describe it. But the particular one I am talking about is Uzumaki by Junjun Ito, and it was translated by Yuji Oniki. So this book, it's all about spirals. And basically this spiral shows up in one place. This one man is so obsessed with it. And then the obsession leaks to another family member and other people, and it just continues to go and go. So there's tons of spirals. So if you, if that is, I have heard that like that shape, the spiral shape can be very um, terrifying to people. So definitely head in with caution if you are, do have that fear of spirals. Um, and I think there's something similar to that with holes, but I don't, remember there being holes in this one. It's just spirals. Um, I'm going to read the synopsis because that's going to give the best, better, much better description than I can. And it says spirals. This town is contaminated with spirals. Uh, a small fog bound town on the coast of Japan is cursed. The withdrawn boyfriend of a teenager let's see, oh, according to the boyfriend of a teenager, their town is haunted, not by person or being, but by the pattern. So, I mean, and it's weird. It shows up in so many places, and it can literally be, I can see how it would be very horrifying and haunting. Um, it did at times be kind of creepy. Now, if, here is one thing to keep in mind, especially with Junjun Ito, because I have read Uzumaki, Tomiya, and I'm blanking on this third one that I've read. Geo, I could be wrong on that, but all three of them contain body horror. So if, if you like horror, but don't want anything that has to do with body horror, like misshapen bodies, um, or just anything that has to be, that can be classified as body horror, you'll want to avoid uh, Uzumaki by Junjunito or Junjunito in general because body horror is very prevalent in all of his stuff. I find it fascinating but um, I know that can be very bothersome to people so yeah so that is definitely something to keep in mind for that particular author. Okay so moving on we're going to talk about the book Chills. This is part of a series it's Kathy Ryan is the name of the series um, and it looks like it just took me to the, I clicked on the wrong spot. There we go. There's four primary works in this series. And the author is Mary San Giovanni. I'm sure I said that wrong, but 
I'm going to say a lot of things wrong in this video, so let's just go from there. Now this one says, True detective meets H.P. Lovecraft in this chilling novel of murder, mystery, and slow mounting dread. Okay, so you can see a, a Lovecraft or Lovecraftian novels is a big thing that's come up with everything that I've looked for. So this one says, It begins with a freak snowstorm in May. Hit hardest is the rural town of Colby, Connecticut. Schools and businesses are closed, power lines are down, and police detective Jack uh, Glazier, I'm guessing, um, has found a body in the snow. It appears to be the victim of a bizarre ritual murder. It won't be the last. As the snow piles up, so do the sacrifices. Cut off from the rest of the world, Glazier... Uh, teams up with occult crime specialist Kathy Ryan to uncover a secret society hiding in their midst. The gods they worship are unthinkable, the powers they summon are unstoppable, and the things they will do to the good people of Colby are utterly, horribly unspeakable. That sounds really good to me. I do like isolated things. Okay, this next one looks like it is a standalone, and that is The Fisherman, or The Fisherman, The Fisherman, um, by John Ling Lingan. Um, yeah. Okay, it says, In upstate New York, the woods around Woodstock, Dutchman's Creek, flows out of the Oshokan Re Reservoir. Steep bank, fast moving, it offers the promise of fine fishing and of, some, of something more, a possibility too fantastic to be true. When Abe and Dan, two widowers who have found solace in each other's company and a shared passion for fishing, hear rumors of the creek and what might be found there, the remedy to both their losses, they dismiss it as just another fish story. Soon, though, the men find themselves drawn into a tale as deep and old as the reservoir. It's a tale of dark packs, of long-buried secrets, and a mysterious figure known as Dare Fisher, the Fisherman. It will bring Abe and Dan face to face with all that they have lost and with the price they must pay to regain it. Okay, so this next one, I actually decided I was going to look up the pronunciation and it is Cthulhu. So this is the one that I was like, C-T-H-U-L-H-U, -H -H -U, so it's Cthulhu. So the title of this book is Cthulhu's Daughters. Um, and this looks like it's a collection of short stories because it does say collect or it says stories of Lovecraftian horror. So this will be another place to start to kind of dip your toes into cosmic horror. Um, and it lists the author as um, Sylvia Moreno Garcia, but then it lists Sylvia Moreno Garcia as an editor. So I don't know if she actually has a story in this or if she's just compiled it, or if it's collect, if it's all stories by uh, Sylvia Moreno Garcia, or stories from different authors, I don't know. But let me go ahead and read this, the synopsis. So it says, they emerge from the shadows to claim the night. Women from around the world delve into Lovecraftian depths, pinning and illustrating a variety of weird horrors. The pale and secretive Lavina wanders through the woods. Um, Asenath is a precarious So I'm going to go ahead and read the synopsis. So it says, They emerge from the shadows to claim the night. Women from around the world delve into Lovecraftian depths, pinning and illustrating a variety of weird horrors. The pale and secretive Lavina wanders through the woods. Asenath is a precarious teenager with an attitude, and the ancient Egyptian pharaoh uh, Nitocris... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> has found a new body in distant America. And do you have the time to hear a word from our beloved mother, Shub Nugarath? Defiant, destructive, terrifying, and harrowing, the women in She Walks in Shadows are monsters and mothers, heroes, and devourers. Observe them all in their glory. La la. So, yeah. So that is Kululu's Daughters, Stories of Lovecraftian Horror. Now this one, um, it says it's the second in a series, but 
On some sites it shows that it's a standalone, so if it is part of a series, I am guessing from what I have seen that you can read them um, separate. And it's the Book of Juke is the name of the series. The first one um, is Utopia, a novel of terrible optimism. I'm going to scroll down and say, let me see. It says that this is horror. It does say Lovecraftian. So let me go ahead and read the synopsis of this one, which is the first in this supposed series. And then I'll look at the second one. So in the first one, which again is Utopia, a novel of terrible optimism. Oh, and this is by, these books are by David Nickel. So it says, the year is 1911 in Cold Spring Harbor, New York. The newly formed eugenics records office is sending its agents to catalog the infirm, the insane, and the criminal with an eye to a cull for the betterment of all. Near Crackweed Wheel, Montana, a terrible illness leaves Jason Thistledown an orphan, stranded in his dead mother's cabin until the spring thaw shows him the true meaning of devastation and the barest thread of hope. At the edge of the utopian mill town of El... Elida, Idaho, Dr. Andrew Wagoner faces a Klansman's noose and glimpses wonder in the twisting face of the patient known only as Mr. Juke. And deep in a mountain lake overlooking that town, something stirs and thinks in its way. Things are looking up. Utopia follows. Jason and Andrew as together... Uh, oh, Utopia follows Jason and Andrew to get as together and alone. They delve into the secrets of Elida, industrialist uh, Garrison Harper's attempt to incubate a perfect community on the edge of the dark woods and mountains of northern Idaho. What they find reveals the true terrible costs of perfection, the cruelty of the surgeon's knife, the folly of, a, of the coal, and a monstrous pact that begins that use... Wait, and a monstrous pact with begins that use perfection as a weapon and faith as a trap. So Volk is the second book in that. And you know what? I am not going to read the synopsis of that because with just that first little sentence in the synopsis I found, it appears that it actually is, in fact, going to be like part of that like the series, and I don't want to read anything in that synopsis that would spoil anything in the first book, again, which is Utopia. So just consider that. <laughs> so I should have switched the cover from Volk to Utopia, um, but let me write that down, actually, so I don't forget, because I will forget if I don't. Okay, this next one is called Malparatus, was written by Jean Ray, and I think John Flanders, although Jean Ray looks like it is the first one. Um, it also shows a name of Ian White, so I don't know if John Flanders and Ian White are translators, or if just Ian White is the translator, but Jean Ray is who I'm going to go with on this one um, for Malparatus. So the synopsis says, a manuscript stolen from a monstrosity, the ancient stone house of a sea trading dynasty, which may be haunted. These are familiar ingredients for a gothic novel, but something far more strange and disconcerting is taking place within the halls of Malparatus. As the relatives gather for the impending death of, of Uncle uh, Kasav, the techniques of H.P. Lovecraft when transplanted into the suffocating um, Catholic context of a Belgium scarred by the Inquisition produced in Jean Ray's masterpiece. Uh, let's see, a story of monumental intensity from which intense, excuse me, from which events of certain ferocity break the surface without ever lessening the suspense of the tale's approaching apocalyptic uh, denouement. So very short synopsis. Still couldn't tell you what that's about other than people getting prepared for an uncle's death. Yeah. Okay, so that was Mel, now Paradise by, I'm just going to say Jean Ray. Okay, final three. So this one is called The House on the Borderland by, Will Borderland by William Hope Hodgson. And uh, these synopsis are fairly, for the most part, fairly short. So this one just says, a manuscript is found filled with small, precise writing and smelling of pit water. 
It tells the story of an old recluse in his strange home. And it's even stranger Jade Green Double, seen, uh, seen by the recluse on an otherworldly plane where gigantic gods and monsters roam. Soon his more earthly home is no less trouble than his bizarre vision, as swine-like creatures boil from a cavern beneath the ground and besiege it. But a still greater horror will face the recluse. So, yeah. There is The House on the Borderland by William Hope Hodgson. The rest of the synopsis just is like comparing it to Lovecraftian horror or comparing it to H.P. Lovecraft. So there's that. Speaking of H.P. Lovecraft, with <laughs> cosmic horror being compared to H.P. Lovecraft or Lovecraftian, I could not make this list without including a book by H.P. Lovecraft. So the one I am including, now there are a lot of books, there is even one called Kululu, something like that um, as well that I did see, but the one I am listing is At the Mountains of Madness. Uh, by H.P. Lovecraft. So, this one says, Long acknowledged as a master of nightmarish vision, H.P. Lovecraft established the uh, geniusness and dignity of his own pioneering fiction in 1931 with his quintessential work of supernatural horror at the Mountains of Madness. Okay. Uh, the deliberately told and increasingly chilling recollection of an Antarctic expedition, uh, expedition's uncanny discoveries and their encounter with an untold menace in the ruins of lost civilization is a milestone of macabre literature. So, I mean, that's all it says. But, yeah. So I, I don't even really know what it's about. Let me know if you've read it. <laughs> but, yeah. I don't know. I'm just... I'm intrigued, especially where everything keeps going back to H.P. Lovecraft. I'm definitely wanting to check out some works by H.P. Lovecraft. So this might be the first one of that particular author that I read. Okay, so this na last, next and last book that I will be talking about, or just reading the synopsis for, um, is the book that I'm going to commit to for reading for the week of cosmic horror for horror mayhem. And that is going to be The Secret of Ventriloquism. And part of the reason why I chose this book is because the cover where it has the head of the dummy that you would do the ventriloquism for gives me major um, R.L. Stein vibes with one of their, his Goosebumps books, Night of the Living Dummy or something like that. But it has that dummy in it. He's got a couple of books with that dummy. But that's the vibe I get from the dummy on the cover of this book. <laughs> so, And this is by John Paget. Okay. Let's see. Okay, so I've just had to skip several lines that just talk about the author's work um, and how this is named like the best work of 2016 or something like that. So let's see what this synopsis can tell us about the secret of ventriloquism. It says, a bullied child seeks vengeance within a bed's hollow box spring. A lucid dreamer is haunted by an impossible house. A dummy reveals its own anatomy in 20 simple steps. A stuttering librarian holds the key to a mills town's unspeakable secrets. A commuter's worldview is shattered by two words printed on a cord cardboard sign. An aspiring ventriloquist spends a little too much time looking at himself in a mirror, and a present speaks through them all. So, yeah, I, I think that's the one I want to read for this week. So that's the one I'm going to commit to. So again, that is The Secret of Ventriloquism by John Paget. So that's what I will be reading for Cosmic Week. Cosmic Horror Week of Horror Mayhem. So um, let me know if you've picked the book for this week or if you are just kind of reading whatever you want. Just let me know what book you're planning on reading or hoping to get to for all of Horror Mayhem, not specifically just for this week. But um, if you know what you'll be reading for this week, definitely let me know. So that's going to be it for this particular video. I have one more TBR or Possibilities uh, video that will be coming out. Um, so just keep an eye out for that one, uh, but I will have another one coming out for that, for that final week. So until next time, stay true to yourself and enjoy a good book, and I will talk to you later.